what I found uh, while trawling through some old junk boxes looking for a thermal printer. Um, I came across my first GSM phone, uh, a Nokia model, I've forgotten the model number, from about 1996 or 7, I can't remember. Um, as expected, the battery is completely dead, and may not even work. Uh, but otherwise, it seems to be in, in good nick. Uh, let me see. Get this into focus. Uh, Nokia 3110. Um, I don't see any date codes there. Um, yeah, so I think that was sometime around 1997 when I got this. Um, so let's see if I can find a charger and uh, charge it up and see if it still works. Um, couldn't find a charger for this in the end. Um, so I went googling for Nokia 3110 to see what, um, what kind of voltage this um, device would take. And uh, very hard to find information on this phone. Um, most of the links were for the Nokia 3110C, which was is a completely separate phone that Nokia released 10 years later in 2007. Um, that kind of crazy thinking seems to be seems to have been par for the course for Nokia around then. So um, I just plugged something in and just ramped up the voltage from three volts up until something started happening and uh, I noticed that the uh, at about seven volts uh, current started flowing and things started happening so here's my homemade charger connected to my lab power supply and uh, plug it in you can hear a beep but unfortunately that is about as much as I'm getting right now um, I turn it on. I can. I don't know if you can see in the video, but there is uh, the backlight does. The LCD backlight does turn on, and I can hear keys beeping. So there's something going on, but uh, I'm getting nothing at all on the display. Uh, that could very well be because the LCD is. Um, is faulty or the connector to it is faulty. This, this seems to be a common problem with uh, old electronics that have been mothballed. Um, displays are one of the f first things to go in from my experience. Um, yeah, maybe I'll take a quick look inside and see if there's any obvious um, explanation for this. So, it came apart quite nicely. Um, that's what I like about 1990s electronics. Uh, designed for fixability, um, unlike some of the stuff you get today. Um, so came essentially two halves and uh, no wires or, or ribbon cables, just a, a, um, a contact connector here. Um, this to that there. Um, it seems that the, I'm guessing the top half, the top layer is um, the user interface electronics and the bottom half is related to the um, to the radio functionality. Um, so um, there is a, a metal can over the electronics here to prevent um, interference. So I'll just take this off here. And um, that's all the 1990s era um, radio and um, baseband electronics. Um, and on the top half uh, our keypad display um, actually I don't see much else other than the keypad and the display. So I guess all the smarts is actually here and this board here is just purely for um, f 
for uh, LED indicators, LCD, and the keys. Um, can't see. I'm not sure if this is going to be repairable. I doubt it. Um, my gut reaction or gut feeling is that there's something wrong with the ribbon cable here, or the connector here to the LCD, but um, I have no way of knowing and I couldn't be bothered to find out. Okay. Um, so I don't think there's much else I can do with this other than put it back together and keep it as a museum piece. Alright, bye folks. Yeah, when um, putting this back together I noticed something. Um, you can lift the LCD uh, display up and uh, there is a ribbon cable uh, connecting it to the PCB and um, I noticed that the, some of the traces here, I don't know if you can see um, there's at least three traces that have um, broken so that would explain the uh, blank LCD um, let's see if we can take a look at it under the microscope so I've got my USB microscope in place and uh, you can see the display here and uh, yeah just tapping on the uh, the ribbon connector um, definitely I think one two at least three traces have been are broken um, I don't think that's going to be easy to repair um, I might give it a shot at some point uh, probably not today um, but I suspect that's the reason for the blank LCD Okay. I made an attempt at a repair. Um, what I did was just douse the whole area in solder flux and um, used a fine point um, soldering iron tip uh, to uh, bridge the gap between the uh, this uh, ribbon and the PCB. Um, so it seems to have worked. I've checked it with a continuity tester and um, only way to find out if it works is to put the whole thing together and see what happens. So I've put it back together. Um, so let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, oh, this looks very promising. Um, I've got a charge icon or charge indicator which I didn't have before. So let's see what happens if I turn it on. Oh, -ho! insert SIM card. This looks very promising indeed. Um, now if I can find a suitable SIM, uh, my current SIM is a micro SIM so I need to find an adapter for it. I uh, might give this a go and see if I um, can make a call with this old phone. Oh, I jury rigged um, a SIM adapter using the uh, the original packaging that the... Um, uh, there's actually a mini SIM, not a micro SIM, uh, came in. So just put it in and uh, use some duct tape at the back and a few extra layers to, to give it some... Um, uh, to make sure that the... Um, the micro sim, oh, sorry, the, the mini sim is firmly pressed down on the contacts. So um, let's put it into the phone and see what happens. Okay, sim is in, so let's power it up and see what happens. Right, well, that was quick. You wouldn't get a startup time like that on a modern phone. Okay, um, let's try dialing a number. So I'm going to dial my home number, my home landline downstairs. 
Uh, I'm going to cut this part from the video because um, I want to keep my number private. So I'll join you again in a few seconds when I've uh, established the call. Okay, so um, I don't know if you can hear that ringing in the background. Um, call established fine. Um, so I'm just going to end it now. There you go. A 15 year old phone brought back to life. Um, and it kind of shows you what you can do with older electronics that you can't do with the latest generation. Um, I mean, that was a 20 minute repair job to fix that LCD. And uh, I doubt you could do that with a modern smartphone. Um, so there you go. Bye bye, folks.